how to wrap your Serenity loom and mark it so that you can use a rib stitch on it. And now with the rib stitch, it's already going to have like some of the spaces in it, kind of like your figure eight, but they're going to be wider. And as you can see, they're going to be even wider using it. Some of them are going to be even wider using it as a rake style on this loom. But that's going to be fine because you're marking both sides the exact same. So if one's a little bit wider, it's going to match up with one on the opposite side. That'll be wider as well. All right, so how we mark this. There's already some pegs marked on here. Those ones are to show you how to do a figure eight stitch, which I've already got a video for that. So what I'm going to do is I mark mine with fingernail polish just because it takes a little while for it to wear off. I've noticed using, oops, using Sharpies, it'll wear off a lot faster. But I'm using fingernail polish and I'm just taking, and what I'll do is all the pegs I've missed on here, I'm going to mark, and then I'll show you how to wrap it on the next peg. On the next, I have another loom that's already drying, so I can show you how to wrap it on that. But your end points are the same for any wrap. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Mark the sixth. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, mark number thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, mark number sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen. Number 19 is already marked, so since you leave that one unwrapped for more than one stitch, I'm only going to mark half of it, and I'm actually going to mark that side in case it starts to wear off. There we go. Alright, I forgot number, number I was at, so go one, two, go. the third one. And again, this one is already marked for a different stitch, so I'm just marking half of it. And then three more. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Alright, now we're going to do the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Which these are just going to be the same. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Seventeen, eighteen, okay, number nineteen. Just mark half of it because it's already marked. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty-ten, twenty-eleven, twenty-twelve, twenty-thirteen, twenty-fourteen, twenty-fifteen, twenty-sixteen, twenty-seventeen, twenty-eighteen, twenty-nineteen, twenty-twenty, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-twenty-eight, twenty-twenty-nine, twenty-twenty-ten, twenty-twenty-eleven, twenty-twenty-twelve, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-twenty-eight, twenty-twenty-nine, twenty-twenty-ten, twenty-twenty-eleven, twenty-twenty-twelve, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-twenty-eight, twenty-twenty-nine, twenty-twenty-ten, twenty-twenty-eleven, twenty-twenty-twelve, twenty-twenty-one, twenty-twenty-two, twenty-twenty-three, twenty-twenty-four, twenty-twenty-five, twenty-twenty-six, twenty-twenty-seven, twenty-twenty-eight, twenty-twenty-nine, twenty-twenty-ten, twenty-twenty-eleven, Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two. All right, so mark your pet your loom, let it dry. I've got one back here that's been drying, and then this is what you do. Every time you come to, on this one I did them blue, which is, might be a little hard to tell the difference in the video from that one and that one. This one's like a dark red and this is a blue. Probably should have done different colors. You want to do two different, completely different contrasting colors when you mark these. 
but we are doing a rib stitch. So we're going to start down at the bottom, wrap around once, go up to the top, here's the top, wrap one and wrap two, go down, wrap one and wrap two, and you just keep up this pattern. Wrap one and wrap two, wrap one and wrap two, wrap one and wrap two. Right here we got one marked, so we're going to skip it. Wrap one and wrap two, wrap one and wrap two, wrap one and wrap two. See, that's a, the original collar. And I will probably get a lot of comments asking why I marked the pegs. See, there's one I marked. Let me show you an example of what happens if I don't wrap the pegs. See that? That stretches it too far. Just look at it like this. These pegs are spaced oops, and even spacing apart on this whole loom. So that means this outside edge has more pegs on it than this inside edge. So when we are doing it as a rake style, they will not match up. So that is why you got to skip some pegs. So we skip it. And we're ending on this side. Now let me flip this over. I'll show you how you do your cast on for this. Move some of this out of the way. Okay. So we're at this one and it was wrapped around once. What I do is I just wrap it around once because it's kind of like a U-wrap. Then I go back and we are re-wrapping these. And you're going to follow your pattern exactly. Huh. You may want to go through and push the previous row down a bit first. Alright, now we're back. Flip this around. Back at the beginning, here is your cast on string. We're back at this last peg. So we wrap it and then you take your hook and you pull, I've got fingernail polish all over my hands, pull the bottom over the top. That locks that in. Now as you can tell, each peg that is marked with the blue, the color shows up. This is blue. This is like a dark red if it's not showing correctly in the video. But all these blue pegs I've skipped. And each of those has see two sets on there. And of course I'm using a size 6 super bulky yarn. And I'm just using one strand of it. This is actually uh, Loops and Thread Cozy Wool, 90 yards. Alright, so from here, you take that bottom, put it over the top, take the bottom, put it over the top. And we're going to do this on the whole loom. And you can knit these off however you find it more comfortable. So we're almost to the end of just taking off that bottom loop, which I didn't push these down first. You're going to want to do that so you can separate them. See, I've got one right there. It's up underneath of it. But you're, and your first row may be a little tighter than the rest, but that's okay. Just uh, try to wrap loosely or use um, a yarn guide or a tensioner, and all that is is some type of tube. This was off of a crown. Uh, you can use a straw, a big pen, just something to hold while you wrap. Okay, so this is your cast on. And of course, between each row, you want to take and push all these down. But this is what your cast on will look like. And all you do, it's just basically one, well, two steps. You take, all you do is follow 
that same pattern, which is two on one side, go over, do two. Two on one, go over, do two. You follow that every single time, wrap it the exact same way, take that bottom loop, pull it over the top until you get it to the length you want.